Hello, AP Calculus AP students. Mr. Regan here from Avon High School. And we're going to take a look at our final video, another short video from topic 5.2 that outlines example three, which gets into the idea of a critical number. Now, before we take a look a little bit at this example, let's revisit some of the things that we mentioned in the first video about what a critical number really is. Perhaps you might recall on the previous page of the notes, we, de we defined a critical number simply to be a place where the derivative of a function is equal to zero or where a function is not differentiable. And so in large part, we just really take our derivatives and we either set them equal to zero or find when they're not defined and boom, we're going to find our critical value. And then all of these things become really important. Sometimes we'll call it a critical number, critical point, critical value. They all mean the, mean the same thing. And it's that value of C, that X value, that would make either of these two things a true statement. Let's take a look at our example. So here we go with our example three. It says to let g be a function given by g of x equal x squared times e raised to the kx power where k is a constant. For what value of k does g have a critical point at x equal three halves? And so you can kind of see we've reverse engineered this question a little bit. For the vast majority of times, from this point on, you are all going to be finding critical points. In other words, we'll give you the complete function and no kind of arbitrary k value that you'd have to solve for. And you would take that derivative and set it equal to 0. In this case, we've done something just a little bit different. We want you to find the k at which the critical point exists at 3 halves. So you're still going to have to think about taking this derivative um, of the function g. So when we do that, we have to use the product rule, and then we end up getting 2 times x times e to the kx power. Add that to x squared, and then for the derivative of e raised to the kx, you do your derivative of e to the kx, which is e to the kx, and then you'd have to multiply it by the derivative of kx, and if k is a constant, we can just put that k in front like that. Now here's the part that's a little weird. We know the x value for which the critical number is going to occur. So what that means is we will replace all of these x's with 3 halves. And there's a lot of instances where you're going to have to do that. In fact, it looks like there are four instances where we're going to have to do that. And then we are going to set this equal to the value that we know must be true whenever a critical number occurs, and that's 0. Now, the other instance is that this derivative could possibly be undefined. Now, if you know a little bit about the graphs of x squared by itself and the function e to the x, it's very likely that the two of those are not going to be undefined anywhere. And it just turns out that if you were to multiply them, the graph that's the ending graph product doesn't contain any sharp turns or anything weird of that nature. So you're going to rely on the first definition of a critical value, and that is the derivative equaling 0 in this case. Now what I'm going to do is a couple of things here. I'm noticing that I could factor out an e to the 3 halves times k power. And so I'm going to go ahead and make that happen. And at the same time, I'm going to simplify what's left. In other words, 2 times 3 halves I know is just a 3 plus, and then the 3 halves squared is a 9 fourths, and I still have a k residing along with him. And so this essentially is the equation that I've got to be able to solve for, for k. I can use the zero product property that says if you have two or more things that are multiplied together that equal zero, then that means each of those things individually could potentially be zero and that would end up giving you your solutions. And so this is what I've got. Now, it might seem kind of initially that I could have two answers here, which is a little bit scary, because if you look at the four 
options, there are only single answers. And it turns out that this problem here on the left has no solution. We're not going to be able to call it any kind of an answer because of the fact that e raised to some power is nonsense. You can't raise e to a, well, e to a power equaling zero is, is nonsense. Of course, you can raise e to a power, but you can't take 2.7 and raise it to a power and expect to get zero for an answer. So you can eliminate him completely. Now over here on the other side, I'm going to solve by subtracting 3 over to the right. And then I'll multiply both sides by 4 over 9, the reciprocal. And upon doing that, I could cancel my 3 and my 9. And I would get negative 4 thirds for k. And as it turns out, that is one of our options, and it is the correct option. That's the K that would make this particular function have a critical point at three halves. Hopefully this helps. We'll see you next time.